Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what you need to consider before you use a beta. And I made a couple points because many of you ask me if you should use a beta, how to install the beta, how to uninstall the beta. And so I wanted to try and answer those questions right here. So right now I'm running iOS 11 beta four, and this is the developer beta. You need to know there's two different betas. There's a developer beta, which requires a developer sign up for $100 per year. You'll get the betas as soon as they come out. However, when they're a little bit more stable, Apple usually releases the public betas, and there tend to be one beta behind when it comes to the major revisions. So the one major revisions being when they switch from iOS 9 to 10, 10 to 11, for example. With those revisions, the first one or two betas are usually really, really buggy, and so they don't push out a public beta, and so what happens is they get a little bit behind. So you might have iOS 11 beta 4, like we do now, and iOS 11 public beta three. They're actually the exact same betas. They're just one behind for the public beta so that you missed one because it wasn't stable enough to use. Now the things you should consider before using a beta are a couple different things. You need to be prepared to lose your data. If you're going to use a beta, you need to understand that backups from the current OS, iOS 11, will not work on previous versions of the OS, iOS 10 or nine, for example. So if you're back on iOS 10.3.3 and you just came from iOS 11, you can't restore your phone from that iOS 11 backup. So just keep that in mind, make a backup beforehand, be prepared to lose any data that you've had while on iOS 11, such as new texts, new game data, things like that. Chances are that's going to get lost at some point, unless you just keep with the betas and upgrade and deal with the problems. The next thing to know is you're going to have problems. You're going to have bugs. Programs may not work properly. Applications, you open them up, open them up such as Facebook pages, or Facebook, it might crash immediately. You'll have to reboot your phone, uh, sometimes even daily, and that may not fix those programs at all or applications. When you have problems, it's just part of the deal. You go to uh, your feedback tool, you report that as a bug, and you let Apple know that you're having a problem, and then hopefully they fix it and it's not too big of a deal. The other thing you need to know is your battery life is probably going to be terrible at some point. So yesterday or the other day, I tweeted how good my battery life was today. It's been awful. I'm at 42% and I've plugged it in once today to charge it. And this is an iPhone seven plus that should easily last me through a day. Normally it lasts me through a half a day. So that sort of thing happens with betas and Apple suggests thirdly that you have your secondary device run the beta. So maybe you have an old iPhone or an iPad that's not as critical to your daily use of texting or using maps or anything like that. Then they suggest running it on that device. I know many people that use an iPad or an iPod or an iPhone to run iOS 11 beta to check it out and then use the release to public iOS 10.3.3 on their device or whatever's out at the current time. So that's definitely something you should keep in mind. Now, if you're okay with all of those things, you can easily install the beta. If you're a developer, uh, you go to developer.apple.com and sign up and those things should be fairly straightforward. You install the beta profile, check for an update and it's there. If you're not a developer, you can go to Safari, go to beta.apple.com. It will bring you to this page. And at this page, you can sign up to be in the beta program. And so you sign up, once you're signed up, you sign in, you'll have a profile to install. You just tap the file. It'll ask you if you want to install, you install it, reboot your phone, and then you go out to settings, go to general, go to software update, and it will say there's an iOS 11 update or whichever one you're looking for. Once that's installed, you'll have the update. Now, the one thing you need to keep in mind though, if you'd like to go back, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You should have a computer running iTunes to do that. You can't really go back without that. So what you need to do is install iTunes. If you don't have it on windows or Mac, once you've got that installed, then you need to go to general. Once you're under general, you need to go to profile your beta profile remove the profile, reboot your device, and then you can restore your phone. Now you can use what's called an IPSW file. That's the update file to go back, or you can put your phone in recovery mode in order to install the 
the previous version and that usually works the best and then you can restore from your previous backup. Sometimes you can use the current IPSW file using update to actually install the older version, but it doesn't seem to work so well with iOS 11 going back to 10. I'm not sure why that is, but if you need to put your phone in, in recovery mode, what you do is turn it off and then prior to an iPhone seven or seven plus you hold down the home button while you plug in your cable while you're holding down the home button, keep holding it, plug in the cable, keep holding the home button until iTunes sees it as an iPhone in recovery. It's the same process with a seven or seven plus, but you hold down volume down. So that's how you go back to the previous version. And it's not very challenging to do that, but sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it fails and you can't go back and Apple, will tell you, you can go back usually to the previous version, but you may lose your data. So as long as you're okay with those things and you consider that when you're running a beta, go ahead and run a beta. It's valuable to Apple to learn what's wrong using the feedback tool. Make sure you use that. So if you have a bug, you think no one's seen, fill it out. If you have a bug you've seen over and over, fill out a feedback form and let them know you have that bug and participate in the beta. And it'll be valuable for everyone because uh, I get asked if there's bugs every single day. If I'm experiencing a bug, you may experience something I don't experience. And the other way around could be true as well. So it's very different for very different people. All iPhones are not the same. 6S, 6 Plus can run a little bit differently on these betas. So just keep those things in mind. Check out the beta. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.